And I'm Nick, I'm a communications director for Cook County and Cook County Board President Tony Preckwinkle. I've been at uh, President Preckwinkle's office for four years and uh, President uh, Preckwinkle sends, sends her apologies. She had a family emergency, otherwise she would be opening right now um, and I'd still be waiting to come on up. But uh, she had a family emergency and she just couldn't make it this evening. But I've been with the, uh, the president for four years. Prior to that, I was at the previous Cook County Clerk's office, Cook County Clerk David Orr. Uh, I was there until he retired. Uh, prior to that, I was at Navy Pier. And in a previous life, um, I was a journalist. So I was at, uh, amongst a number of jobs, Los Angeles Times, Baltimore Sun, and for a little bit on uh, Chicago Tonight as a producer reporter there for about four years. Um, honestly, guys, I'm here to tell you a story. I just want to tell you about the story about how Project Rainbow uh, came to be, um, what Project Rainbow is all about. Hopefully, in the midst of all this, I will uh, maybe illuminate everyone just a little bit about our office and, and what we do and, quite frankly, how special it is uh, to be there, uh, especially in this critical moment um, in time and during the pandemic. So um, with that, I'll just dive, dive right on in. Uh, I was at a press conference not too, too long ago. And at the press conference, uh, I was reminded of uh, an African tribe. And this African tribe in particular, the one that you see on the screen, they greet people a little bit differently. Instead of saying like, hi, or hello, uh, they do something different. Um, they end up saying five words. They're five simple words, but they're very powerful at the same time. They say, when they greet someone, and how are the children? And how are the children, right? And typically, the response is the same. And they say in response, all the children are well. Uh, Nelson Mandela once said, the true character of society is revealed in how it treats its children. And the rhetorical question I'll leave with everyone today is, by that barometer, how satisfied are we with the character of our society today? Let me tell you a story. I, I heard running come up uh, in our intros. I love to run. Um, I've always loved to run. I'm currently working on a dad bod right now, but I have loved to run. <laughs> um, and so I want to show you something from October of 2000, uh, was October of 2020. So these are some of the times within the week time span of when I went running. Uh, you'll see right here, I was doing pretty good. It says a year ago, but it was much longer than that. It was October of 2020. I, I did 3.3 uh, miles in uh, averaging roughly 946 per mile. And then you start seeing the times go up, right? So on Halloween, I decided to go on a run. I'll never forget, it was Halloween. I decided to go on a run, and I'm like, hey, let me just knock out three, four miles really quickly and go about my day. And so I get out there, and then... This was Halloween. Could barely get through two miles. It took me 12 minutes, 30 seconds to do it. It was per mile. It was brutal. It was so bad. I never take notes. I mean, who takes notes when, you know, when you're running on the app? But I decided I needed to take note, a note that day. I said, tough day. Didn't have much energy. Could only get through 2.1 miles. I, I never take notes, but it was something about that run that really was affecting me. Little uh, did I know a week later goes by. And this is October, like, I guess the first week in November now, and I, I have COVID. I was really trying, you know, I, I thought I'd make it to the vaccination. You know, we knew it was coming. I had COVID, and boy, uh, did it knock me out. I had brain, uh, brain fog for six months. It, it was just crazy. But in the middle of all of that, um, especially during the quarantine, this is a picture of my son who's watching at home today and my two daughters. So I'm gonna say hi to them really quickly. Hey, Silas, Kennedy, and Mackenzie. This is he and I in quarantine. Um, we had a lot of those moments, right? There's only so much you can do when you're in quarantine at a certain point in time. Um, and so he was looking at my phone at the time and they were, again, we were doing this pretty consistently. And I said to myself, boy, we, my family is in a place of privilege. We can, um, you know, buy an app to help when, when it comes to early childhood development right now. 
He's younger. He's five now. He was younger at the time. We, we you know, could provide resources for him so he can continue to learn, you know, during, during the midst of COVID. But not everyone has that opportunity. So I started thinking about him. I started thinking about my daughters. I started thinking about um, just the students and kids in general in Cook County and the impact COVID was going to have on their lives. I'm going to pause there and just run through some quick facts. The first 1,800 days of a child's life, they're the most critical. They are truly the most critical. A child will undergo the most dramatic period of learning and development in their lifetime during the first 1,800 days, prenatal to five. By age three, 80% of the architecture of a child's brain for a lifetime of learning will be formed, roughly 80% by the time you're three. By age four, Language development, the brain's toolkit for learning, memory, and cognition should be well on its way by then, okay? Language development, which begins in infancy and grows with the child, significantly affects school readiness and achievement in both kindergarten and first grade. You get the gist. Bottom line is this. The science has shown the first five years are truly, truly critical years. One more fact. This is from a recent... Uh, article from a, a study from Harvard, what, what they've discovered was that for school districts remote for more than half of 2021 students uh, in low-income areas those, or high poverty, those schools lost the equivalent of 22 weeks of instruction okay, during COVID. Okay? So I believe we must be relentless in our pursuit of the ability to honestly say, just like I said at the very top, all the children are in fact well. I want to pause here because what I'm going to go into in a moment really speaks to um, President Preckwinkle and her leadership. She has allowed um, and allows us to be imaginative, creative, and to really think outside the box. Um, and it's a special place to work. And you see here, she was a history teacher. Um, so she cares about early childhood education. She cares about kids. You see, she was uh, one of the first older, older people to, to bring their child to, um, to the city council floor back in the day. So this is rooted um, in a passion of hers. And so I brought this idea of Project Rainbow to her. Um, and I'll get more into that in just a moment. But I want to talk about the philosophy <laughs> that I tell my team all the time, and it's right here. I hate government, and you can too, and before I get fired, let me explain what that means. <laughs> um, I tell everyone who's on my team, I hate government, and you can too. What I mean by that is not government itself. I love government, I love what it means, I love what we do on a daily basis, but when it comes from a communication standpoint, when it comes to creating, right, from the ideation to, to um, messaging, marketing, branding what we do to really get out the message to the public, I think government in general can do better. I think of government as like a typeface, almost like Times New Roman, if you will, right? <laughs> Boring, it's there. We, we all know it, we, we, you know, it's there, but it's, if you were associated a color to government, I think you'd almost say gray when you think of it in terms of um, creation and, and when it comes to communications. So I say, and I tell my team, we need to not have that ideology. We need to not subscribe to the idea and create something unique, different when we are messaging, when we're creating, when we are marketing all that we do. And I promise I'll bring it all back to Project Rainbow in a minute. So during the middle of COVID, we created a physical distancing campaign. We called it physical distancing. That's what the CDC called it. And so um, here was an example of where uh, we wanted to continue to promote businesses. They were struggling. Um, this almost feels like a time capsule at this point. And so we said, eat, drink, and be six feet apart, right? We wanted to give the president, this is in Hyde Park, um, and we wanted to show her out and about and say that you can still shop, wear a mask, be physically distant, and still support your community. That's the idea of I hate government and you can too. Here's another one. Recognize this album cover, Beatles uh, cover, Abbey Road, right? So we sa I said, what if we change this up a little bit? put it in a, in a COVID world, got rid of all the guys, did something a little bit different. Shot this in High Park, six feet away, six feet distance, everyone's got masks, 
trying to do something different, creative, something that you wouldn't expect government to do on a day-to-day -day basis, right? And then what I'm really proud of, everyone has probably seen this picture of Michael Jordan, right? Iconic photo, really trying to get the message out about wearing a mask, being six feet, um, keeping a six foot distance. We did that. I think it speaks for itself. In the context of I hate government and you can too, this is what's possible when we get outside that box and do something creative and imaginative, okay? I'm gonna show you one more quick thing. No one's ever seen this one before and I'll probably never show it again. But this one never made it out. <laughs> Some folks already get it. So, so <laughs> this never made it out. I'm showing it one time and one time only and then hopefully I still have my job after. But so to show you, to see the other side of President Preckwinkle, we wanted to make uh, light of um, the pop tax. Everyone remembers that, right? So we shot this in Hyde Park. We didn't, just didn't feel like we got it fully right. We used a Taylor Swift quote there. That's a pop on the other side of her, so we shot over her shoulder, showing the physical distance. We are never, ever, ever getting back together, like ever, all right? Showing the physical distancing, right? Let me move on really quickly. <laughs> you guys get the point. So what is Project Rainbow? Along the same uh, framework, I thought, what could we do from a communication standpoint? Typically, folks think of communications as a, a department that gets the message out, right? Writing speeches. Um, you know, honestly, we're part of policy, doing, doing lots of different things, but what could we do that's big that you would think would come out of a bureau rather than the communications department? And so I had this idea. I reached out to the Golden Apple Foundation. I told them, look, um, there are kids out there who in this time right now of crisis um, need curriculum. You know, they need high quality educational content. And so I reached out to the Golden Apple Foundation. I think everyone knows what that is, right? It's the organization that, one, does basically the, the Oscars for, or the Emmys for teachers. They celebrate them, give them, give them awards for the wonderful work they do on, the, on an annual basis. Um, but what they also do is teach teachers how to teach in the classroom, okay? Um, and they also create curriculum, okay? So I reached out to them, I said, this is what I'm looking to do. I'm looking to record teachers teaching early childhood programming, and I wanna put it on our county TV station. We have a Cook County television station, and I wanna put it on social media, and I wanna put it on all of our channels. And that's when I found out how much curriculum costs. Tens of thousands, by the way, okay? So from then, I reached out to my man Joel over here, and I told Joel, I said, Joel, um, we, I have this idea, and I'm wondering if some other folks might be interested in partnering with this idea too. I said, Joel, do you know anyone from Microsoft? Joel put me in touch with someone from Microsoft, who put me in touch with someone else from Microsoft. We had more conversations, and ultimately they said, we love the idea, we're gonna buy the curriculum so you can have it, okay? So they did, and they gave it to the county. From there, I reached out to the Chicago Children's Theater, I had been having conversations with another, a, a number of entities, and they said, while what would be great is if you happen to have like an actor, because it's one thing if you're gonna have someone, um, if you're gonna record these lessons, it's one thing to have the curriculum when, you, when a teacher has the students in front of them, but they don't always have students in front of them, and they're not gonna have students in front of them in this particular case, I mean, right? It's because they'll be teaching straight to a camera, so you really need someone like an actor who is used to just talking straight to the camera, right? Almost like Blue's Clues, if you will, right? And so, I reached out to the uh, Chicago Children's Theater. They found me an incredible actor. Her name is Jasmine. And she ended up uh, taking the wonderful curriculum that we got from the Golden Apple Foundation, turning it into scripts. And then we ended up recording that um, in English and with an infusion of Spanish. She um, not only is an actor, but she also um, has worked in uh, the school system uh, for years, so it was, a, it was a perfect blend. So then I said to myself, wow. So we ended up recording roughly 20, 20 something episodes, we also call it Project Rainbow, uh, of early childhood content. And all of the content is now available on our website, projectrainbow.cookcountyil.gov. 
I reached out to the University of Chicago. You see, all these partnerships are just have been incredible, and partnerships that uh, the county ne didn't necessarily have in this way before. I reached out to the University of Chicago, and I said, "Hey, this is what I'm I'm looking to do." Um, and through uh, the University of Chicago, they said, "Hey, how can we help?" And I said, "Well, the county's never really had an app before. Is there any way you can help in that regard?" And he said, yeah. So he put me in touch with the University of Chicago's tech team, their student-led tech team, and they said, we'll build you an app where all the content can reside, okay? Um, and they did. From there, I said, well, how far can we take this? I started reaching out to our sister agencies, Cook County sister agencies, the Forest Preserves of Cook County, um, Brookfield Zoo, the Chicago Botanic Gardens, I pitched the same idea to them. I said, hey, we'd love to create some early childhood content and put it on our television station. They said, how can we help? Do you want to do it? And they said, yes, we'll do it. Uh, and I'll show a little bit, I'll show a snippet of what um, uh, the Chicago Botanic Gardens created in, in just a bit. And they did. And then I kept going. In total now, we have roughly 25 partners, some of whom we've already activated, uh, some of whom will be activated in uh, the time to come. Uh, again, this has only been about a year, and it's been pretty incredible. We now have roughly 150 hours of early childhood or family-oriented content, um, whether it be on YouTube or our app or airing on our television station. We're about to, uh, do folks know the Black Harvest Film Festival? We are about to partner with them and um, have some family-oriented films uh, be exclusive on our app as well, okay? And the partners just keep going. So one prong to this, there's three prongs of Project Rainbow. One prong is all about content and building that database of quality educational content for kids and families that's accessible to all. I'm not really as focused on downloads right now. I'm not on the app. I'm just trying to get, get it out there in as many places as humanly possible um, and go from there. There's a second prong to it that's all about policy. So we created uh, a, a paper, a white paper, that talks all about uh, the importance of early childhood education and why um, when you have good quality content on a, on a television screen, kids can learn from that in, a, in an educational way. It's on our website. But we were very intentional with the language there and making sure we use appropriate language, right? So instead of saying minorities in there, and quite frankly, throughout all of the work that we do throughout Project Rainbow, we, instead of saying minorities, for example, we would say people of color. Instead of saying at-risk children, we would say children who are at risk of not receiving, right? Instead of saying poor, we'll say children and families with limited access to economic resources. Being very intentional, that language is so important. Another way in which we are... Um, uh, impacting policy, we know that if uh, a parent becomes justice involved, um, let's say I went to jail tomorrow, right? If my children went through DCFS, they would, be, they would have access to state resources. They would immediately be able to have access to resources. Now, if they went to my father or a friend or relative, which happens in many cases, those folks may not know that those free resources by the state are available to them. We don't know what that full population is. We just don't have that data. So I'm working with the Erickson Institute right now and a couple of other uh, county entities to get that going, to find out what that population is going to look like and how we can have an impact there to make sure everyone is aware if their loved one becomes justice involved that the child has access to the free resources that are available to them. So there's video content, there's policy, and then there's action, right? Two examples of action. Um, we ended up partnering with PCs for People, a not-for-profit that works with, um, that gives away or sells PCs at a reduced or free rate. We ended up partnering with them uh, and the Cook County Department of Public Health um, and did a vaccination drive in one of our hardest hit COVID communities last year. Um, branded it Pro Project Rainbow event. We ended up getting, giving away 250 PCs for free. It was one of the largest vaccination uh, events that Cook County Department of Public Health had done at the time. Um, 
and it was one of the largest events that PCs for People had done at that time, okay? Uh, we did it in the South Burbs. And then most recently, we created a $1 million scholarship fund. Um, one of the things, of course, that we know out of coming out of COVID, that there just aren't enough black and brown people who are in the medical field. We need more, we need more folks. So I was trying to figure out what, what could we do within the same realm, within the same space. And I had this idea of creating a scholarship fund, and the president okayed it. And so what, that's what we did. It's operated out of um, Cook County Health. And what we did, we targeted high school students, CPS and suburban uh, Cook County high school students, college students, and those who are entering or already in the medical field where uh, financial resources might be um, a hindrance to, to graduation or um, a concern in terms of, of, of graduating. We wanted to provide access for scholarships to those folks who are interested in, in entering that field. And so we did. And so what you see here is a picture of the uh, scholarships that we just gave out about, um, I think about a month and a half ago, uh, totaling a total of $1 million. And Project Rainbow is just really beginning. Like we, this has only been one year, and this is kind of the impact that we've had so far. Before I wrap up and take questions, I want to show you a video if it'll play. This is what the Chicago Botanic Gardens created. When I was a kid, I spent most of my time exploring outside. That's where I discovered the power of nature, plants, and science. My whole world changed, and there was no looking back. Some people have diaries. I kept notebooks of all my adventures. Whatever I need to find, a faraway place, an old friend. This did not exist prior to COVID. This did not exist prior to Project Rainbow. They specifically created this for us, for the project. Um, and if you watch some of the episodes, I promise you, you would think it could air on, you know, National Geographic television or something like that. It's, it's really cool. Um, it's a win-win for everyone. We're promoting the work that they're doing. It's an incredible educational tool for kids and families. What I've told everyone who has created content for us is that I will reject anything that comes across as a commercial. It has to be educational. I don't want a commercial. I want our children to learn. If you watch any of the videos, I've had no issues with anyone. Everyone has provided nothing but incredible content for kids and families. Over the course of time, we'll grow. Right now, we're focused on the early childhood population, plus a, f a few years older than that, I would say roughly up to eight, nine, or 10. Um, as Project Rainbow matures, um, so will the content that we have. Um, we're already doing that a little bit as we can, like I said, as we partner with, um, uh, with uh, the film festival, and we'll continue to do so. But look at this, this is pretty stellar and, um, and really impactful. And I couldn't be more excited about his future. Really quickly, this is some of the branding that we've just created more recently, bus shelters, billboards, benches, social media. Um, I didn't mention this, but we did all of it pretty much without a budget to start, okay? I told you that, because um, it was an idea, and this was not during the budget cycle or season, so the app was done for free, right? Everyone created, found the money or the resources to do this out of their existing general funds, right? Um, I told you about what Microsoft did and the, and and just the philanthropic nature of the community. And when you talk about 25 partners, this is really a civic pride moment for all of us in, in Cook County uh, for us to be at this position today. Um, the county had really never entered the early childhood or childhood space prior to now. And in one year, this is what we're doing. So with that, I'll take questions. Thank you. And I just wanted to give you kudos to doing this. I think, you know, I having twin boys, I'm like, I need them to be watching this. But I, I just want to say it's really powerful to see in the midst of kind of catastrophe with the pandemic, seeing what you were able to do to really make impact has been beautiful. Um, I, I'm really curious just to know what support looks like for what the next steps are, are going to look like. I know you mentioned growth. Yep. You're going to be working on the film festival, but just from the civic community and just ways in which you're trying to expand and grow, what are kind of the priority areas that you're trying to get support? No, and how I, can we help? Yeah, no, I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. for, uh, for starters, 
I'll be, let me be honest with you guys on this. This is, this was after five, after nine, quite frankly, this is after the babies go to bed. Right. So this was, um, when you have a passion, you just have to do it. Right. And so this was, this is over a course of a year, what I worked on really from about 10 PM to 2 AM for, for about a year. Cause it was the only way it was going to happen. We, I mean, we know what was happening with George Floyd. We know what was happening just with so many, uh, of our Cook County residents dying of COVID and the president needing to be out there and the, and the message what we were doing. Um, and, and to have that impact and, and, get, and to let the public know um, of what resources the county was doing. So this was, this was after that. And so it takes time, right? And it, it takes time. But the, to answer your question, um, our, our community, our partners um, have one committed to continuing to uh, provide the content, right? Um, and have, have continued to provide resources. Um, we are creating more content in-house. Um, we have committed, our partners have committed to doing events. It doesn't have to always be about um, content for the, for, the, uh, for the app. So we have had numerous conversations and it's really about time and resources on my end, about being able to um, create free events for, for kids and families in, in particular areas, especially when they may not necessarily be going to some of these um, uh, institutions on a day-to-day -day basis. So promoting what is possible and for free. Um, but bottom line is everyone is committed and I can pick up the phone and say, hey, what about this idea? And we can workshop it together. Um, I'm trying to think most recently, we, we're gonna have a, we're building a talk show in-house um, where folks who will be interviewed will look like um, the full complexion of what Cook County has to offer, right? So kids can, can see themselves of all races and demographics and say, hey, I can do that one day, right? So we're, we're building that in-house. We, uh, we have a TV studio, so we're doing that. I mentioned the film, uh, the film festival. Uh, we'll be doing an, another round of um, uh, Project Rainbow um, uh, programming that we're gonna create in-house too. So the, we cre like all the episodes that we got from the or the curriculum that we got from the Golden Apple Foundation, we filmed all that in-house, our own videographer, all that. So we'll be doing uh, a second season of that as well. Uh, and it's, and it really, quite frankly, it's just to continuing to have the conversations with folks. What do you want to do? How, how can we lift up the, um, the early childhood education work that you're doing in-house already as well? A lot of these folks, a lot of these entities have in-house early childhood specialists. Um, and that was another reason why it was such a win-win because we're helping lifting, we're helping to lift up the work that they've been doing in-house already, right? So um, it's a multi-pronged approach, but uh, over the course of 2023 and beyond, um, we, we've got a lot of ideas, and we're just going to keep the, keep the momentum going. Thank you. Last thing I'll mention to that, the president has uh, President Preckwinkle loved our million-dollar scholarship. She upped the number to 1.5 million. So in 2023, we'll be giving out 1.5 million to kids. Have uh, you connected with uh, homeschool networks or have they connected with you? Yeah, I, I appreciate that. We're in the process of that now. Um, right now, I wanted to build more more content that we have because that will be the start of really starting to assess the data that we that we have too and seeing the impact that it's having on kids. So we're in the process of working with, um, of building that and, and partnering with various um, uh, homeschool networks to, to do exactly what you're talking about. It likely won't happen really until 2023, but we're in the process of making that happen, 100%. It'll be how we measure. Got it. So expanding a bit more on that, Sorry. How has this content been accessed and used? Um, and are you trying to keep it like in Cook County? No. Or because it's all digital, you're trying to expand more nationally? Def definitely um, promoting in Cook County. We, get, we got uh, some national press. Um, so, the, so our story has aired in roughly, uh, I think, 75 different markets um, in the last year. Um, but focusing on uh, Cook County, but... <laughs> would love to get it out as far and wide as possible. It does not have to live within, within the Cook County borders whatsoever. Um, you just made me think of one other thing. The, the coding that we have, 
it doesn't need to reside in Cook County, and that's what I've, I've told folks with the Project Rainbow app. So what we have committed to doing is creating a version of the same coding, the Project Rainbow coding that you can find on Apple or Android, and providing that coding for free to any other municipality in the nation that wants it. Um, and so we'll be making that accessible and free. We'll probably strip out some of the, we're gonna be stripping out some of the, um, the branding that we have, but the, the main coding to get other communities going, um, we're gonna make that accessible. And our team is currently working on making that happen. I just was curious also about um, how are you planning to measure the um, amount that kids are learning from the program? Yeah, I, honestly a work in progress right now. So we, we, we still have to work um, with those home child care providers. We have to get that established um, and, and get that going. And that's not what we have done just yet. That won't happen until 2023. Right now we're, in terms of at least the, on the video content side of things, we just want to build that library as much as, as possible and then we'll establish that next year. Okay. I just want to ask, well, what provided you with the inspiration, especially to be able to work from 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. in the morning? <laughs> uh, my children, right? My, my children to start. Um, the, the last three years have been insane. I mean, this, who would have imagined that we'd be wearing masks right now? You know, who would have imagined that we'd be concerned about touching door handles and I mean these last three years um, and I just feel like you have a responsibility when you sit in these seats of leadership to do all that you can right for the next generation and to um, press the push the envelope as much as you humanly can for what you do and try to do even more and when you work in an office that gives you the license to do so why the heck not right so I understand that you access this through an app. Have you thought about other channels? I think about audience like we're on YouTube and we're think we you know Shihacknet has our own channels and we're trying to be where the eyeballs already are. Have you thought about expanding beyond to different places? We would absolutely love to. <laughs> so it is. Um, I said early on we weren't uh, concerned about downloads right now, it, in part because it currently airs on our Cook County uh, TV channel. It is also uh, free for everyone. All the video content is free on our YouTube uh, channel. And then we're also, and it's also on our app. So we're kind of splitting eyeballs in three different places, right? Um, eventually some of the content will become exclusive to uh, the Project Rainbow app. Um, but right now you can ac assess it in, in multiple, access it in multiple places. But that would be my, my ask and call to action would be for um, anyone who could help us spread the word, right? Uh, we have wonderful content and we wanna get it in front of as many people as humanly possible. And we, and we are just, we are currently and we'll be doing even more uh, in terms of the impact uh, in the policy realm and to the extent that uh, folks wanna lift up what we're doing, why we're doing it, we'd be incredibly grateful. Is the app version available on like over the top platforms? Like if I were on TV, can I get on an Amazon, Roku, Apple TV? That it, no, it's not on there just yet. So it, it's only, it's mainly on um, just Apple and Android devices uh, currently right now. Um, um, hopefully in the future, but I, again, from a, from a resource standpoint, we're, we're just focused on those two right now. Um, I guess in regards to the app again, yeah. um, I think you had mentioned on the side that uh, East Chicago in developing the app was also like making all the content as part of the app and that people who had like, um, you know, difficulty with access to internet could uh, get the app still. Could you just explain a little bit more like uh, those who have difficulty with internet access, how they can get access to the app and any difficulties with that? No, I, I appreciate that. So... Uh, one of the first things that we did, uh, we focused on Android devices first, right? Um, and then we switched to Apple just from, a, uh, from the research that we had done, at least at the time, it showed that more folks across all demographics had some sort of Android device more than a more expensive potentially Apple device. So we created the, the Android device first. Um, we were very intentional in making sure that the content was also on um, the Cook County channel. Now, in order to access the Cook County channel, you have to have Comcast, right? So there, there are limitations to it, right? Um, roughly 25% of um, 
suburban Cook County residents do not have access to high-speed internet access, right? Uh, it's incredible, and, and, and more needs to be done. Um, and so we, we kept that in mind and did all that we could. We know there are gaps, right? Um, but we tried to be in, as intentional as we possibly could about reaching as many piece, people as we possibly uh, could. So again, it was the Android app first, airing it on our, on our um, TV station, and then again, the reason why all the content, and why we're splitting um, the amount of uh, eyeballs, if you will, into all categories as possible. We just want to reach as many people, so that's why all the uh, content is also available on YouTube. We know we're gonna we know we're gonna miss folks, but we're doing the best that we can. I guess I'm just curious if you have any reflections on doing this, like from the county, like, and what might be different if this had been a project of the city or the state. Like, what do you, is there anything you think that's like unique about doing this from like a county perspective? Mm. I would say that. Um, it was bold in the sense that we've never we've never really focused on early childhood. The city, the city oversees right CPS, right. Um, the state definitely has a hand in it. Um, this was new territory for us, just in general. Um, the new territory allowed us to have creative license to to create in a way with. Um, with no boundaries on what was possible, right? Because we didn't have a framework before. And so um, I think not having boundaries and with the philosophy of I hate government and you can too, I'm not sure, um, I'll just speak for Cook County and say it's a unique office that we're in that allows us um, to do something like this. Um, I can't speak for the, for the city or the state, but if you look at our design, it was all intentional. Um, if you if you look at you know the branding and the marketing, you just don't see it in many places. You don't you don't think that government created this, right? And it was um, 90, 99% of it was created in house, a vast majority of it. I will one one uh, point of clarification: U Chicago created the app, and then since then, it, um, our contract is with Clarity, and so now Clarity has taken over the app um, for the more of the day to day elements of it. You said that you already have you have plans for the future for this uh, application, and uh, my question is: um, Was the project Rainbow was one of the first startups for you, and um, or you you had had some uh, this kind of experiences before? No. I had never done anything like this in my life. I didn't know what I was getting myself into. <laughs> I had no clue. Um, and I learned along the way. And um, it's been a, a fascinating ride, uh, I'll tell you that. Um, but no, I had, had never touched an app, or had never touched the creation of an app prior. Um, uh, had so many evening conversations about what was working, why my idea was too crazy, and how, how we could just rein it in and, and make it make the most sense. It really started, the app really started with, uh, we were only going to do uh, videos that we got from the, from, um, the Golden Apple Foundation. Um, and we were just going to have an app that just had that alone. And then it, it just started to build and build and build. And I was, you know, giving gray hairs to everybody as we continue to build and build and build. Um, but folks loved it, and they said, let's, let's just continue to build and see where we go. But that was not the intention. The, the original intent was just an app for the alphabet, <laughs> essentially. Um, yeah. As far as a team that you work with or have worked with, how many have deep teaching experience? Because oftentimes when you have such projects, you have administrators, you have techies, which are all these are important, but oftentimes I've seen uh, a gap being, a deficiency being people who have long, deep teaching experience. I appreciate you bringing that up. That is such a critical point. So when we created the Project Rainbow videos that we filmed in-house, I know it's confusing. It's like overarching umbrellas, Project Rainbow, and then we've got the content that we personally created at the county, also called Project Rainbow. We brought in a CPS teacher as well. So we had the actor who took the curriculum. Um, she has um, teaching experience as well. But then we brought in a teacher, a, uh, an active CPS teacher, to also oversee the film shoot to ensure that everything that we created um, 
uh, had the um, support of a teacher who's doing this on a day-to-day basis, if that makes sense. I had the exact same concerns as you. I, didn't, I initially said I didn't want an actor. I would prefer slightly more boring content that had a teacher in front of the camera. Um, so I felt like I was getting the best of both worlds, a teacher, someone who's taught in the classroom. But they, I, I, so what I did was I reached out to the Erickson Institute and I said, I, I really want someone else to help support what we're doing to someone who's currently in the classroom. And they found somebody for me immediately and she stayed for, for the filming of the majority of the shoots. Um, uh, she left to go back to teach after, but we had gotten into such, a, such of a rhythm and she had gone through all the scripts that, um, that foundation, that support was there. And then for the other folks who have uh, created educational content for us, um, let's take our, the ones I can speak confidently about um, and, and most directly to are the Forest Preserves of Cook County and Chicago Botanic Gardens. Well, they also, like I mentioned earlier, they, they have, um, uh, I, I don't want to call it childhood, but they have, a edu- they have educators on staff as well um, who ensure that everything that we are teaching is accurate and true and, and um, appropriate to the age group. So there was always that foundation. That was critical, that we always had that educational foundation, that we weren't just creating TV, but we were creating TV with the backbone of professionals who... Um, who know what they're talking about, right? And and we just aren't TV producers creating things, if that makes sense. That was that was absolutely incredibly important to us. Yep, yep. Thank I think you that, for asking that. Yeah, I think that's all the time we have for questions, unless anyone has one last one. But Nick, thank you so much. That was really really wonderful. Thank you.